Hi, welcome back to McClatchy Mass. I'm your host, Natalie McClatchy, and today we are talking about how to express compound interest as a recurrence relation. Now, if you haven't watched our previous two videos on what compound interest is and how to calculate it, then you might want to watch those ones first. But let's dive straight into recurrence relations. And in this video, I'm going to introduce the recurrence relation for compound interest to you and take you through some worked examples of how to use the relation. So let's get right into it. Here is what the recurrence relation looks like. This is taken straight from the Queensland's um, QCAA general maths formula sheet. And it says that the recurrence relation for compound interest is A with a subscript N plus one equals R A with a subscript N. Now you might be thinking, what on earth does that mean? So let's talk about the different variables in the recurrence relation. There are three parts to a recurrence relation, and this applies to any recurrence relation that you see for sequences as well. So your left-hand side, and we've got an equation here, you can see there's an equal sign in the middle. The left-hand side of that equation is going to be a variable. In this case, it's the variable N, which means an amount of money. And that's what usually A means when we're talking about compound interest. So an amount of money and in a time period n plus one. So it's some sort of variable on our left hand side. On the right hand side of our equation, we have some sort of function being applied to the term before. And it's usually the first variable in the series being variable n. In this case, it's the amount of money and in the time period of n. And then we apply some sort of function to it, which is in this case, timesing it by r. And then we get the next term in the series, which is a subscript n plus one. Okay, now the value of the variable at the beginning, variable at time zero, should also be written on your recurrence relation. Now that's not put on your formula sheet, but you need to remember when you're writing a recurrence relation, that's an important part, is stating what the variable is at time zero, because that gives you the very beginning of your series. Okay, that might be a whole lot of mumbo jumbo. Let's talk about this in with respect to compound interest specifically. So in the case of compound interest specifically, a n plus one is the amount of a loan or an investment after n plus one periods. Now you might be thinking why n plus one? Well, because the left hand side of the equation is what results after we do something to the term before. So the term before is the, the nth term. So a nth term is the amount of a loan or investment before the interest has been applied in the nth period. Once again, this probably does sound like a lot of mumbo jumbo until we do a worked example and then it'll all become crystal clear. And A0 is the principal because that is the amount of a loan or investment at the very beginning, at time zero. So that's why it's important for us to include A0 in our recurrence relation. Now you might be thinking, well, R, we haven't seen the variable R before. We've been using I for interest. Well, R is an interest rate as a decimal per compounding period plus one. That is R equals I plus one, because you remember from our previous video, I is the interest rate as a decimal. So we've got to change it from percentage to decimal by dividing by 100. And then we have to divide by the amount of times it's compounded within a year. So if it's a monthly, it's given to us as an annual rate compounded monthly, we've got to divide it by 12. That gives us our value for I, and then we add one to it. Now you might be wondering, why do we add one to it? Well, if we simply put I, a n, what we're going to be doing is finding the amount of interest, but we're not actually going to be increasing the amount of the loan or the investment by the interest. We're just going to find the interest as an amount. What we want to do though, to find the next term in the series, which is the amount after the interest has been applied, is we've got to add it on. So that's why we add one. So it's 100% plus the interest rate. Okay, let's do some worked examples. Hopefully this will make things become a lot clearer. So write the recurrence relation for a, for a loan of $18,000 at 6% per annum compounded monthly. Okay, so we've got our formula at the bottom of the screen, but we should always write the formula as well. And we're adding a zero on there. Okay, so we're starting off with a blank template. Now we need to substitute into that formula, but states and variables first before you jump straight into substitution, because you want to make sure that you've got the value of R correct before you start chucking numbers into an equation. So firstly, let's start with A0. We're told in the question the loan was $18,000. So that's that principle of the loan. That's the amount of the loan at the very beginning. So that's the amount at time zero. That is $18,000. Our interest rate, well, we're told it's 6% per annum. That's what the PA stands for, per annum, meaning per year. 
So we need to divide that by 12 because it's compounded monthly. So when we divide that by 12, we get 0 0.005. But now we need to change this into R. So we're going to have to add 1. So 1 plus 0 0.005 gives us 1.005 after we've added the 1. Okay, so now we've got our variables. Let's substitute it into the recurrence relation. So now we've got A at time n plus 1 is equal to 1.005 multiplied by a n. Now you don't have to substitute anything into a n plus 1 or a n when you're writing a recurrence relation um, because you've got the value of a zero there telling you that it starts at 18,000. So what this recurrence relation is saying to us is that whatever value that our loan is at whatever time period, n could be after 100 months. So at 100 months, we take the value of the loan at the time before, multiply it by 1.005, and that will give us the loan at 101 months because that's 100 plus 1. So this is how we use the recurrence relation. Um, at this point, we're just writing like a blank template, and we've just substituted R and A0 in. That's all you have to do when you're writing the recurrence relation for a loan or an investment is just put R in and A0. Okay, let's use that recurrence relation now because it's okay to write recurrence relations. That's really something very simple, familiar um, in an exam, but we want to know why we would actually use this. What's the purpose of it? So we're going to use the recurrence relation from our first worked example, worked example one, to determine the value of the loan after three months. So the recurrence relation is actually useful for finding the next term in the series for a, for a short period of time. We wouldn't want to do this process for 50 months or for even more than 10 months, that would be kind of crazy. But for the first three months, our recurrence relation shows us what's coming next in the series or the sequence. Okay, so we find A1. Now A1 is zero plus one. That's why I know N plus one because over here we've got N plus one and this is N here. So we're finding the first term after one month. So that'll be A0 that comes into the equation here. A at time zero, then zero plus one gives us one. So we're gonna multiply that by the rate R, which is one plus the interest rate, and that gives us an amount that's higher. Now, if you get an amount that's lower, you know you forgot to add one to R, okay? So to make R. Um, so don't make the mistake of doing that. I have seen students do that before, where they just put the interest rate in here and multiply that, and they end up with something very small and the reason they've ended up something small is because they've calculated the interest, not calculated the loan plus the interest, which is what we're doing here. So the amount owing after one month is $18,090. So you can just see by a simple subtraction that the interest was $90 for the month. Okay, now we need to do the next month. So that would be month two. So that's why now we put in here month one, and then we've got month two over here, which is one plus one equals two. So now when we multiply 1.005 by the amount before, notice this amount drops down into the recurrence relation and we get a new amount of $18,180.45. Now we're going to do the same process again. This number here will drop down into the recurrence relation for the third month. So up here we're going up in ones. So now this was A0, A1 pops down there, A2 pops down here. And now we've got this number here. Now, the reason why I've written with five decimal places is because I'm actually going to write a statement at the end because I've been asked to do something in words. I've asked to determine. So the value of the loan after three months will be $18,271.35. Always remember when you're presenting money that you round off to two decimal places. Now we're going to use the recurrence relation from our first worked example to determine the value of the loan after two years. Now, that is not... Um, A2, it's actually A24 because there are it's compounding monthly and there's 12 months in a year. So we're actually going to have to apply that process 24 times. Now you could literally sit there and write that out like we did on that previous example. We've got A123, you could sit there if you wanted to and write it all out and do it 24 times, super tedious there is something on your calculator called the iterative function, which will do it for you. So let's jump on to doing that now. Okay, so I've got something here called an abacus calculator. You normally see me with the Casio, but I'm trialing a new calculator at the moment. I do believe it has actually been put together by Casio and it's called an abacus calculator. So what we're going to do here is we're going to start 
with our $18,000. We're going to put that into our calculator and then we're going to press the equals button and that will drop it to the bottom of the screen. We always do this when we're using the iterative function. Now what we're going to do now is multiply that um, by 1.005 because that's what's happening here. 1.005 and then what we're going to do is we're going to press our equals button 24 times. So let's do that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Nothing super hard about that. Um, just make sure that you're always counting properly. And it's probably a good idea to double check that you've counted, especially when you're counting off 24, that you've done the right numbers. So what you can see is that that has actually multiplied 18,000 by 1.005 24 times on your calculator. And it's come up with this as the answer. That's the value of the loan after two years. Now you might be wondering what kind of working should you show for that? I always think you should write down on your exam paper using the calculator or using the iterative function on the calculator to demonstrate that that's how you've come up with the number. And then I think you should show intermittent values. You wouldn't have to write down all 24, that wouldn't be expected, but show some working. So for in this case, three or four of the values in between. So you might start with A6, A12, and the 18th value. Then you would show your 24th value and write that as a statement at this point because it is a worded problem once again. So write the value after two years is $20,288.88. You'll notice that I rounded each of these values um, to two decimal places as I was showing my working, but obviously I didn't round off on the calculator. I kept it going with all of the decimal places. Well, that's all we have time for today. I hope you found this video helpful and if you did, why not like and subscribe to the channel and tell somebody um, about this? You could actually share the video on social media with your friends and family, or just tell us in the comments. It's always great to hear your positive feedback. And if you've got any questions whatsoever, you could email us at mcclutchymass at yahoo.com or contact us on Facebook or Instagram messaging. You can also join us there on Facebook and Instagram and get um, some competitions, tips, tricks, memes, all sorts of fun information, and also find out when new videos are released there as well. Well, you've been watching McClutchy Maths. I'm Natalie McClutchy. Have a wonderful day.